Step one is to collect your materials. First thing to make sure is that you've got all the things that you need. You need to take your wood and make sure it's cut up into these sections. So make sure you've got about one and a half metres worth of wood. One metre six will give you plenty of spare. If you're using the TTS wood stock, then they come in 60 centimetre lengths. So you need three of those. Also make sure you've got about 15 centimetres of round dowel. The width doesn't matter. In terms of the front supporting arm, we're going to use Pythagoras theorem to work out the length of the long arm because it's the long part of the triangle. Now, the, if we take the long side A, we, we say that A squared is equal to 9 squared plus 9 squared. If we root that, you get length 9.9. .9. So first second step is to measure and mark out lengths of the wood. Try and fit in your pieces as best you can, jigsaw them onto the wood. Also, your 9.9 .9 centimetre pieces will need to have a 45 degree angle marked out at either end of them. Step three is to take, take a hacksaw or any thin saw blade and cut up your pieces of wood. Take care on the ends, you can see they can splinter quite easily. One thing you can do is use a piece of sandpaper, medium grit's fine, to sand off the edges to make them nice and smooth. Once you've done that, lay out your base pieces like this. You'll need three 8cm pieces and two 30cm pieces. Lay them out like this and then wait for the next instructions. The green parts also mark hard triangles to strengthen your joints. So step five is to glue the base pieces together. Once you've set them out, you want to apply a little bit of hot glue to the end of each piece of wood first to join the pieces of wood together. So that will be your basic hold. One thing I'm marking out here is I'm measuring using an eight centimeter piece to measure from the end of one end to this piece here. That's so that I know where the arch is gonna go later. So once you've glued the pieces together very carefully, make sure you've also got a right angle between the pieces of woods. If you look carefully in the camera here, you can see that the base is forming a rectangle where each corner is a right angle, it's 90 degrees. And I'm using a card triangle with hot glue underneath to strengthen each of the corners. Because the catapult creates a large amount of force when the arm swings through, you want the base to be as strong as possible, as it's going to be the thing that's going to absorb some of the force once we've added on the extra pieces. Once you've finished the base, flip it over, and then you want to repeat the same thing with the card triangles on this side, so it's going to be as strong on both sides. There you go, so there's your completed base. As you can see, I'm tapping it, it's already quite strong. You could actually drop that, be perfectly safe. So, onto the support arch. Step six first of all, you're going to need two 9 centimeter pieces and your 8 centimeter piece. Lay them out like this on, the, on your surface. You're also going to need four card triangles, two for each side, to hold those corners nice and strong. So, say, let, set your base to the side. Once you've laid out your arch pieces, you want to glue these support arch pieces together, making sure you keep a right angle in all your corners. Now one thing you'll notice, the 9cm piece is on the outside, and the 8cm piece is sandwiched between them, not on the end of them. That's really important, as this will mean that your arch ends up being the same width as the base itself. 
So once again, a little blob of glue in between each of your pieces to initially hold it, and then a nice line of glue along each of the top edges before you put down your card triangle. Once you've flipped it over, apply the glue in the card triangles in the same way. And there you have it, your completed base. So the next step is going to be attaching the base, the arch to the base. One thing you want to do, which will help you with support, is if you put the base on its side like this, that way, when you're gluing it, you don't have to hold anything at odd angles. You can also guarantee you're going to get a nice straight line up there and a right angle if you look at it from sideways on. So again, your first step again is apply a little bit of glue to the end of the arch pieces to hold those in place. Once you're sure you've got a right angle there, we're going to take some card triangles and some hot glue and once again, you're going to put tri card triangles across each of your joints to really strengthen them. This is a really important step for your arch, as when the catapult firing arm comes on through, this is where the majority of the force is going to get caught on that supporting arm. So we want that to be as firmly attached to the base as possible. There you go, so there's, there's the supporting arch, the hot glued onto the base, and we're ready to add the next bit. So step nine is gluing the front supports onto the frame. Now, remember the, we cut these pieces at 45 degrees, and the reason we're doing that is because when we start to fit this onto the base, they actually fit perfectly onto the supporting arch and the base there, so there's no gaps between them, and what that does, it gives us a better join when it comes to us putting the hot glue on and also adding the triangles for extra strength. So a dab of, dab of hot glue on the end of each of those pieces. As you can see, they fit beautifully against the actual frame itself. It doesn't matter if they're not the full height of the supporting arch there, although it's good if you can do that. I miscalculated here. Then apply card triangles to each of the joints on the outside. Once you've done one side, flip it around and add your, add your supporting arm and your card triangles on that part as well. One thing that can really help in this project with your hot glue gun, if you have access to a hot glue gun with a very thin tip, you'll not only use less glue, but you can be more precise as to where the glue goes. If you can, either get hold of a wireless glue gun like the one I'm using, or get hold of one with a very thin tip, then that will help you a lot to making sure it's nice, um, a nice straight line to your hot glue. Now what I'm doing here as an optional step is you can put hot glue on the inside of the joints as well. And again, I'm just reiterating, the stronger you make these supporting arms, the stronger you make those joints, the stronger your catapult's going to be, and the, and the thicker rubber bands you can use when it comes to hooking up your firing arm later on. Now we're going to create the supports for your wooden dowel. So the wooden dowel is going to go across the base, very near the bottom of the supporting arch, and that's what your firing arm is going to be hooked onto. So the dowel is going to sit just on underneath the firing arm, and this is how we're going to create our supports. First of all, take an A4 piece of paper, 29.7 centimetres, 
In US it could be any size really as long as it's lengthways. Then tear it down so the piece of paper is roughly an inch wide. And this piece of paper can be roughly 15 centimeters long. Next up we're going to wrap it around the dowel as tightly as we can. So I'm just shortening it to 15 centimeters here. We're also going to need a bit of cell tape at the end just to keep the paper from unrolling afterwards. So I'm preparing my piece ahead of time. So roll your piece of paper fairly tightly around the wooden dowel. We want this to be nearly exactly the same width as the dowel itself. So I'm just showing here the dowel is able to rotate. I'm now sticking it together. Nice and firmly because we want to have a nice neat finish. And just to double check, we can see it's the dowel's rotating beautifully. One down, two to go. So we're going to end up having one of these supports on each side of there, and that's what's going to hold our dowel in place. Take care while you're rolling your piece of paper. One thing that can happen if you roll it too tightly is that the dowel won't actually be able to rotate. So make sure that if once you have rolled it around that you might want to loosen it just a fraction so that the dowel is able to rotate inside the paper. Don't worry if it's fractionally too loose because we're going to add a dab of hot glue later to hold that dowel in place once it's ready to be put together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put our two supports on the end of the dowel and then we're going to place those in place on the frame itself. Note how, this, note how the dowel supports are only as wide as the frame itself because we want to make sure it's going to look nice and neat after we finish with it. So we're going to add a dab of hot glue underneath each of the supports making sure the dowel can still move freely because we don't want to glue that in place just yet. Once that's in place, add a whole load of, hot, load of hot glue over the top of the supports, bonding the archway over the top of the support onto the base itself. The more hot glue you put on here, the firmer it's going to be in place. Also, it can be an idea to put it a little bit behind it as well, just to bond it onto the 8cm piece going across the middle. There we go, we can see it's in place, the paper's not moving around anymore, so we know that's going to give us a nice straight line across. That way our catapult arm is going to fire straight forwards on the catapult rather than going off at a strange angle. Now it's cooled down a bit, I'm reinserting the dowel just to make sure it's giving me a nice straight line. And here you can see this is where the fire arm is going to be attached. It's going to rotate nice and freely, and in fact the other pieces of the other um, paper supports of the dowel are going to stop it moving around too much side to side. So our next step is we're going to glue the dowel support onto the firing arm. Try and make it as close as it can be to the end. So just like before, dab of hot glue to put it in the right place to begin with. Try and make sure it's lined up so it's at right angles to the firing arm itself. And then add lots of hot glue 
to firm it down on both sides. There's going to be quite a lot of force going through here, although because this part of the firing arm is where the pivot's going to be by the bar, we're not going to worry too much about this, and in my experience this hasn't snapped off. Just make sure it's glued on on all sides of the paper dowel holder. Then once that's cooled enough, we're going to test it. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to wrap some tissue around the top bar. What this is going to do is it's going to deaden a lot of the force of the firing arm when it follows through when you let go of it. Otherwise the firing arm would have an awful lot of force put, put into it around about halfway up it this would cause the end of the firing arm to start to bend and over time this would actually end up with the firing arm shearing and breaking um, as it is only made of um, pine. So one thing we can do is we can wrap some tissue, kitchen um, towel around this, dub of hot glue to hold it in place, wrap it around as tightly as you can and the dab of hot glue at the end just to hold it in place. And then to make sure that it doesn't come undone we're going to use some sticky tape, wrap around that. And what we've done there is we created a nice cushion which is going to absorb a lot of the force when the firing arm comes through, but not so much that it's going to make the catapult projectile go a very short distance. So we're now we're going to test to make sure the firing arm with its dial support is going to rotate very well. And then we can see it's coming up nicely. The tissue cushion is doing its job very well indeed. And what we can do now, which I didn't do here, is you can add a, a dab of hot glue onto either side of the dowel supports, which would st stop the wooden dowel itself coming out. So step 13 is to use a thumbtack to attach the list to the end of the firing arm. This is going to be our bucket on the end of the, the catapult arm, and we can put our projectiles in that. The advantage of the plastic lids is A is that it's easy to push, easy to push a, th a thumbtack through, and also you can choose whichever lid you want depending on what you want to fire from your catapult. And there you can see, thumbtack holds it on nice and nice in place. If you want to, you can also put a dab of hot glue underneath the lid before you put the thumbtack in. So next step we're going to create the force that's going to pull the catapult arm forward. Step 14 is to push the thumbtacks halfway into the top of the support arm on both sides. So it's important you only push it in halfway here because we're going to need to attach to the rubber bands and if you push them in all the way then you wouldn't be able to hook the rubber bands underneath the head of the thumbtack. As you can see there's a bit of space between the head of the thumbtack and the wooden support arm at the top so now we're going to hook the rubber bands onto the thumbtacks and then we're going to push the thumbtacks in until they're really nice and tight against the pine. So brace the rubber bands, push the thumbtack in. As you can see it's a bit loose so I'm going to go back again, I'm going to put the rubber band over the ends and then I'm going to push it in as hard as I can so it's in place. I'm going to repeat this on the other side as well. So we've got our two rubber bands ready to go. Also important to note, both rubber bands are the same size, same thickness. So you're going to have an equal force pulling from both sides. Step 16, push the thumbtack into the underside of the firing arm about halfway down. Now ideally you want it so it's where the rubber bands are going to be pulling against most equally. So as you can see here I've lined up the rubber bands and I can see it's going to be roughly 8 centimeters, 9 centimeters up from the end. Do the same thing with the thumbtacks as you did with the um, support arch, push it in about halfway and then hook the rubber bands onto the thumbtack and push it in all the way to secure your rubber bands. There we go, and so the final step is to hold down the base to brace it, to pull it back firing arm and give it a test fire. And of course many, you can do many things to play around with this. You can change the rubber bands, the thicker they are, the greater the force they're going to give. You could try stretching one rubber band from one thumbtack to the other around the base. 
around the firing arm, that also works very well. And also you can experiment with different projectiles. I found that balls of foil work especially well, because you can scrunch them up nicely and they have very small amounts of air resistance. So there you go. One completed model Roman catapult based on the Roman mangonel, which was used to hurl baskets of rocks, sometimes flaming rocks, towards their enemies. Very effective in short, short range. Didn't work very well in long range because it's lack of accuracy. But there you go. Experiment. Why not see what happens if you have lots of little balls of foil versus one big ball? So remember to stay safe. Always, always make sure you're aiming it at an object rather than a person or an animal. And enjoy. And thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, uh, why not like and subscribe for more DT projects, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash the Wee Scotty. Thanks again.